What's cracking, y'all? You are now watching Boo TV. Appreciate you for stopping in. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and let's get into the topic for today. What's up, y'all? Back with some more Larry Bird content. Again, another recommendation from the amazing subscriber and supporter, uh, Dutch T. So appreciate you for this one. She found a group of videos for us to take a look at it regarding Larry Bird's uh, frugality and side hustle bet. So it's going to be a compilation, like I said, of a handful of videos. The first one about Larry Bird's stashed money, a short uh, three point competition, something with Bulls cheerleaders uh, interview, I guess, with McDonald's cake and a free bus, a $20 bet with a Knicks trainer, $5 bet with Bob Ryan. Manute Bowl Bounty, and the Dream Team Autographs. Let's get into it. How Larry Bird tried to save guys from going bankrupt. Larry Bird had different ways of managing money, and unlike many players that lived luxurious lifestyles, he didn't change, despite being one of the best paid players during his time. Even when I was at the top of my game, we didn't drive a Mercedes or live in million dollar homes, things like that. We knew there would be a time when it was over and I wanted to have options on what we could do with our future. Unfortunately, not everyone acted this way. That's why Bird advised his peers to save money and prepare for life after basketball. Some of the guys who made far less than me bought $700,000 homes and the Rolex watches and the big luxury cars. I used to tell them, you're crazy, you should be saving your money. They'd just laugh and make jokes about me stashing my money away. Things got so bad for some of Bird's ex-teammates that they had to ask him for money. But the Celtics legend said no. <laughs> Good on Larry Bird for saying no, man. Good on him. Especially if I'm saying that you got the money, but you're just not allocating your money properly. If you're not saving, I hope you're at least investing. Well, if you're spending, I hope you're investing. But good on him for saying no, because some people it's just it's, they get the money, but they just don't um, you know, they don't they don't budget. I, I encourage everybody, man, to 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 write it all out. Write it all out. What you're bringing in and your expenses, and create a budget. Sometimes you're gonna have to cut back on some things. You might have to disconnect that Netflix. That HBO Max, that Disney Plus. Sometimes you got to strip away these things. Find workarounds. Figure it out. But you want to make sure you have at least money to cover your the, your important expenses, the things you need. You know, roof over your head, water, electricity, things like that. You want to make sure you cover those things. You know, and, and then, you know, and try to save up some on the side. I know it's hard out here. Trust me. I know it's freaking hard out here. Shoot. Again, especially in America, man, they make it so hard for people to, to, you know, to reap what they sow and enjoy life a little bit, man. You, you, we grind, we grind, we grind for what? To pay bills, pay taxes. What are, what are they doing with that tax money? I'm about to turn this into a political channel, my word. But anyway, yeah, I get it. It's, it's hard out here for, for a lot of people. So, uh, but you know, do your best. But you know, I have no problem me telling people, you know, they come to me for money. I'm like, nah, bro. No, no, I can't. Personally, I can't. I'm trying, I'm trying to take care of myself. But for the people that I want to, but I can't, I say, you know, if I would, I could, but I can't. But some people are just going to be like, nah, dog, because I don't see you changing. The, the reason why you ask for money, this is, these are just bad decisions you're making. You're not changing anything. Anyway, good on Larry for saying no. Some people, it's hard for some people to say no. They, they, they just can't bring it upon themselves to say no to people. Me, I shoot you down in a heartbeat. <laughs> I shoot you down like Larry Bird in the final seconds. I will shoot you down. <laughs> All right, next one. In 1986, the great Larry Bird won the NBA's first three-point contest. Everybody knows about his famous flex. When walked into the locker room and asked his peers, who's coming in second? But after claiming victory and reuniting with his teammates, the sharpshooter was on a mission. If you bet against him, you were going to pay the price. Literally, 
As the story goes, some members of the Boston squad apparently doubted his chances. Not only did that skepticism push the forward to enter the contest, but it gave him the perfect opportunity to flex his metaphorical muscles after his win. So when the Celtics checked in an hotel to resume the regular season, Bird patrolled the lobby with a mini golf pencil and small notepad, collecting cash from teammates who made the mistake of betting against him in the three-point contest, and no one was allowed to postpone payment. In his exact <laughs> words, if you don't have your money, I'll wait right here while you go back to your room and get it. Bird told <laughs> I'm the three-point king. <laughs> Larry said, I'm going to wait right here. There is no passes. You do not get past me until I get my paper. <laughs> Larry Legend, God got him. Yo, all right, that's funny as hell. All right, next one. That was good. I can remember the night he and I and uh, Doug, we went out to Rush Street, and as you said, we had a couple beers, maybe a few too many, because the Chicago cheerleading uh, staff was in, happened to be in the bar that we were at, and they kept sending us a few beers, a few beers, and before we knew it, it was late at night, and we had a few too many, we got in a cab, and they got us back to the hotel, and about uh, six hours later, we had to be up, because we are playing a 12 o'clock game that afternoon, and we get to the arena, and you know, we're still a little tired, and uh, happened, matter of fact, Larry fell asleep on the taping table. We get a little nap before the game, so we go out, and Larry takes his first shot. He misses everything, and I'm going, oh, Lord, Bill Fitch is going to be all over me, because he knew he was with me. And Robert Parrish picks up three quick fouls, so that means i got to go into the game and play a bunch of minutes that night. We ended up winning the game and winning the series against Chicago. Bird had, like you said, around 40 points. And as we were walking off the floor, I can remember this. Larry looked over at those cheerleaders and said, thanks a lot for those beers last night. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I spend a lot of time trying to get you. <laughs> That's good. Uh, this is from a YouTube channel called the Universe Galaxy NBA. I've seen stuff from this channel before, but what I did not know is that this owner of this channel is also has a second page that I've I get um, updates from. It's called Michael Jordan fans are the worst. Uh, the comment section and his community posts are quite interesting uh, against the people that tried to defend Michael Jordan. But uh, yeah, go check it out. I had no idea it's the same person. All right, next one. I would write about Maxwell getting a bag of bag of burgers from McDonald's. He'd send the equipment guy, you know, Francis over there to get the bag of burgers and Max would eat in front of his locker and. You know, people wouldn't do that today, I suppose, because the diet restrictions and all that. But but I used to write about that. And Larry would say, Scoop, don't write about that. I eat just as bad as anybody in this team. He says, he says, I hate I hate staying in shape. When, when my career is over, I will be the fattest fuck you've ever seen. He says, you know, just look out below because I'm, I'm, I'm done watching myself on this. And one time he had during the late in the career when he had the bad back, he had to miss about a month and he came back. I don't know, seven or ten pounds heavier, and he said, "He said I was eating wedding cakes every day." Mm -hmm. And we said, what, "Why would you eat a wedding cake?" He said, "Who's going to fuck up a wedding cake?" He said, "So, so he ate wedding cake." And just the way he, his logic, when we were on the road, he'd, he'd say something like, "Like you or I would say if we were living that life." Like, it get it'd get back to the bus after practice at the L.A. Forum, whatever. He'd say, "Okay, we just got through." shooting baskets let's get in our free bus and go back to our free hotel and eat some free food he says well this life in the nba if you don't like this there's something wrong with you and again who among us wouldn't think that way but none of them ever say something like that mm -hmm. to this might be a poor example but i'm going to compare it to being the president of the united states and you might say well how much does a president of the united states mix some people might assume clearly the president makes millions of dollars right uh, millions of dollars deposited into the bank on an annual basis, into his bank account. No, the president only makes about four hundred thousand dollars a year. Uh, I know that sounds bad, but compared to like, you know, basketball player salaries, sports player salaries, it's like, well, this is this is POTUS. He's got to be getting more than you know a basketball player salary. Four hundred thousand dollars a year. All right. The president is also allotted fifty thousand dollars in expenses, twenty thousand dollars in entertainment. And a hundred k in a non-taxable travel account. Even after the president leaves office after their four-year term or their eight-year term, the president remains on federal payroll, and the president also gets a pension 
a annual pension that I believe is about $250,000 a year. So you, you think about all that money and also think about the fact, and this is the reason why I brought that up. He ain't, he ain't paying for electricity. He ain't paying for food. He's not paying for all these necessities that we have to pay for on a monthly basis. So he's not even spending money on all the stuff that drains most of our, you know, biweekly uh, earnings and monthly earnings. He ain't even got to spend on that. He ain't paying for his meals. $50,000 in expenses. What expenses? Please tell me. <laughs> are they charging him? Are, are they charging his light bills strictly on the rooms, his bedroom and the Oval Office? Like, I, like what? Uh, get out of here, man. Anyway, next video. Do you got a Larry Bird story for us before we let you go? One <laughs> I haven't heard. Oh, man. I got so many Larry Bird stories. You know, like, the greatest thing about Larry, I mean, every time I just think of Larry, I just think his, of the extreme competence of Larry. You know, he, I always thought I was confident. You know, I always thought Kevin McHale was confident, but Larry just had a different level. Of but he confidence. would tell guys they, that he was going to shoot in their face, like, I'm going to do this. I was always amazed that, you know, guys would say, yeah. Larry would say, like Xavier McDaniel. You know, he told me he's going to shoot a jumper right in my face, right there. Yeah, no, I I remember that whole story vividly. But I, it, there was a there was a n lesser uh, told story where he made a bet with the trainer of the New York Knicks, and uh, before the game, we were out shooting three. Larry and I were shooting threes before the game, and Larry, he said, "Hey, I'll bet you twenty bucks you can't bank one in like that in the game." And Larry goes, you're on. And so the game proceeds, and we're behind by, or we get ahead by about 20 points the fourth quarter. Our bench comes in the game, and all of a sudden, you know, the Knicks are starting to creep back in the game, but it still feels like we have the game under control. And the trainer for the Knicks looks down at me and, you know, says, like, get, hey, get Larry his attention. He sends him the sign, like, you owe me 20 bucks. You never banked in a three-pointer. And Larry goes, crap, I can't believe I forgot that, you know. And he was, and so sure enough, the game gets down to seven points, I think it was, and Casey Jones puts the starters back in the game. And within the first two or three possessions, Larry gets a shot on the corner and banks in a three-pointer. <laughs> the hardest and bank shot. stage of the game, I mean, with a close game, I could see it with a 20-point lead, but, I mean, I'll never, I mean, I got, so many of the confidence stories like that, but that's just, he, he cared more about that 20 buck bet than he oh, did. Oh yeah. Pay. He was so cheap. I, <laughs> I could just imagine. I didn't want to owe him $20. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. And from the base, I said that is a extremely tough angle to bank corner three. I, I love hearing you talk about, you know, some of the, the legendary stories that you were involved with covering the, the bird era Celtics teams in the eighties. Oh. Is, is there one that stands out that you could share with our listeners? Oh, uh, you know, there's little anecdotal things with Larry. I mean, we could talk about great games and performances, but that anybody, you know, could, could go find and look in. I was uh, you know thrilled to be able to see them. My favorite bird games, you know, would be, uh, I think that defined him in the time that he played, the thing that separated him. Then, and that night, it was, I believe the number that it was, I think the date was either June 6th. I think it was June 6th, 1984. It was a Friday night. It was game five of the finals. It's two to two. We're coming back home uh, after LA and, uh, it's 97 degrees. We're having a heat wave, and there's no air conditioning in the old Boston Garden. And uh, the Lakers are—they are, don't even want to be there. They uh, just don't even want to be there. Kareem is—they they have oxygen uh, masks uh, on, on the bench. <laughs> They've got seriously, and um, it, it, it's a place is crazy. Uh, the fans have made it into a happening. The, they never have so many worn so few cl little clothing in the history of that building. Every woman was in halter tops. Everybody was wearing shorts. It was 97 degrees. Uh, Fahrenheit when they tipped it off and the Lakers didn't want to be there. Larry Bird went 15 for 20, 34 points, 20 rebounds and, and uh, took over the game. And after the game, they said, Larry, you know, how could you do that? He said, hell, this, that hot back home in the summer playing basketball. <laughs> so, or words to that effect. But uh, that's one of them. But that defined him. Mind over matter in that case. 
Uh, that's just one example. Why not? I'll give you one quick uh, uh, personal example. Uh, one night in Chicago, uh, before the game, he was shooting. I was talking to him, and I said, hey, I bet you can't make a left-hand three-pointer. And he said, well, how many tries? I said, all night. So he takes the ball, and he gets into a nearly smart guy, naturally. He goes to the corner, naturally. Second one, swish. It was for five bucks. So I hand him the $5 bill, and he puts it in his side his sock. And I want to believe to this day that he played that whole game with that $5 <laughs> bill in his sock. That's funny. Anybody can confirm. Did he play that whole game with that uh, Bill in his sock? Let me know. Bill Walton shared a story about how Larry Bird put a bounty on Manute Ball, challenging mm. every Celtic to try to dunk on him. Larry called us all together and said that we all had to put this $100 into a pool and that the first one to dunk on Manute would get all the cash, 1200 bucks. After two games where none of the Celtics were able to put him on a poster, Bird decided to put up the stakes. Larry announced that we're going to roll it over and keep rolling it until somebody did successfully <laughs> throw one down on the big guy. According to Bill, Kevin McHale was the guy most eager to throw one down in Manute's face. Hunting for bowl didn't end much better for Bird, who went out of his way to be the one to take home the money. On one occasion, he even stopped a fast break, cradled the ball, and pointed at Manute, who was still down at his own basket and completely out of the play. Manute was clueless to our little game within the game, but he dutifully hustled back, and when Larry came flying in, Manute sent him and the ball back one more time. Robert Parrish eventually got the throw down over the 7'7 seven seven giant, winning a very large sum of cash undoubtedly in the thousands uh glad you got that kevin McHale. such a good sport is manute bowl rest in peace to manute bowl and if you didn't know july 9th is manute bowl day which is also my birthday so every july 9th as long as i remember i'll be doing manute bowl content let's check it out when Larry Bird joined the 92 Dream Team, he was nursing a back injury that prevented him from performing to his full powers. Despite this handicap, Larry Legend tried to beat his teammates in any way he could, even if it involved the most trivial matters. Brian McIntyre, then NBA Vice President of Public Relations, shared a Bird story involving basketballs and autographs. Interestingly, Bird turned this boring little ritual into a competition between him and his Dream Team teammates. I had about 80 basketballs in my room in Barcelona and had to get the players to sign them all. Bird was the last guy and he says, what's the quickest anyone's done it? I said, anywhere from 8 minutes to 20. And Bird said, I'm going to be the fastest. Time me. So he signs them and he throws me the last one. Okay, what is it? Whoa, four and a half minutes. And he goes, yes, competitive right to the end. McIntyre said per GQ. I never heard that basketball <laughs> signing uh, little tidbit there. That's that's funny. I got to get I got to get everybody in a room. Everybody has to be in a room. And then we say, all right. This is this is whoever signs all these balls the quickest. Full signatures. This is all the evidence. We know what your signature looks like, so you have to create that signature on this ball. Have at it. Your signature. Good stuff. And then it's like, well, his signature's he's this guy's a long signature. This guy's a short signature. It's not fair. Larry's just creating stuff. Michael Jordan would do the same thing. Uh, again, Dutch T, I appreciate you. Thank you for finding these videos and pushing them out my way so I could Watch them, react with everybody else, lace them up, and put them out. So, again, Dutch T, I salute you. Appreciate all your support and hard work you have been with contributing to the channel. Appreciate each and every one of you as well. Check out our Larry Bird playlist. More stuff just like this. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and I'll catch you on the next one. We out, baby.